This video is going to show you what you need to install on your machine so that you can get started building React applications using Beat and building AWS systems using the AWS CLI and CDK. The first thing you want to install is Node.js. So just go ahead and type in Node.js in Google. You can go to their download page and just go ahead and click the recommended for most users. If you want the latest and greatest, then you can go ahead and download the latest version, but most companies won't be using that as it takes some time to get widely adopted. So going for the recommended version is probably the best option for most people. Once that's downloaded, go ahead and install that onto your PC. You'll get an installation window like this. Just go through the installation, click agree and install it. Once it's done, you can close it. I'm just going to quit this and reopen my terminal. And now I should be able to run node-v. And it will print out the version of node that I have installed. And that confirms to me that I've successfully installed node. The next thing we want to install is the AWS CLI. So we're just going to type in AWS CLI in Google. We can go to this link here, install, update the latest. Actually, let's just go from this page. And let's do getting started. And if we go over to get started, we can go to install. Just scroll down to Mac OS or the operating system that you're running on. Just scroll down. This is the GUI installer. What we want to use is this one right here. And to paste that in here. Promise for my password and continues the installation. I already have the AWS CLI installed, so for me, it said the upgrade was successful. But for you, you should say something like the installation was successful. And here it shows us what we can run in order to verify that it's been installed correctly. So let's just run which AWS. As you can see, it's been installed in user local bin AWS, which is correct. And let's just check the AWS version. So now we've confirmed that AWS CLI has been installed. Next up is the AWS CDK CLI. We're going to go on the main page after I've typed in AWS CDK CLI. As you can see here, it's as simple as running npm install dash g AWS CDK. It's failed for me and asked me to try to in install it using sudo instead. So I'm going to run sudo npm install dash g AWS CDK. This may or may not happen for you. And as you can see, it's uh, completed for me. It was an update rather than an install, but it should be a similar process. So now I can do CDK dash version and it will give me the CDK version. So now I have node AWS CLI and CDK CLI all installed on this PC. The last thing we need to install is Yarn, the package manager, which is what we're going to be using to build our application. We go over to the Yarn uh, getting started page and we go over to installation. You can see that it's saying as of version 16.10, uh, you can use core pack to do this. So what we're going to run is do core pack enable. And then we can scroll down to here and do call pack prepare yarn stable activate. Now we should have yarn available for us to use. As you can see, we can now have yarn installed. This is the first time I've actually done this. If this doesn't work for you, uh, you can always try to do npm install dash g yarn. And that should also install yarn for you the traditional way. If you're following the course, don't do this just yet. But at this point, you should be able to create V applications using Yarn. All you need to do is type in Yarn Create V, and this will kick off an installer for you. You'll be prompted with a project name. So if you gave it a name, V Project, and then selected your language, I'm just going to select React here, click on TypeScript, and that has created a project for me. That's everything we need to install. But before we go, we do need to set up our AWS environment so that we can use it for our project. In order to do this, we want to go over to AWS and log into our account. 
So once you've logged into your AWS account, head over to the I am Identity Center and make sure you select a region that you are comfortable with working in. I'm going to be working in Europe Island. You can only have uh, this enabled in one region, so make sure you select the right one. Then you see here that you've got this enable button. You click on enable and you can click create AWS organization. Let's just go into users. We're going to click on add a user. And here I'm just going to give my username there as we're done. Generate a one time password. And I'm just going to fill these uh, fields out as they're asking me to. Once I fill that out, I can click on next. Then when we get to this page, it's going to ask us to add a group. I'm just going to click on create a group. I'm going to call this group admin group. And our group has been created. So if we go back here, let's just click refresh, click on admin group. So we can add ourselves to the admin group and then scroll down all the way to the bottom and click on add user. This will now show me that I can log into this portal, with my username and my one time password. So I'm just going to go ahead and log in. My username is red one. And my one time password can be copied over. It will prompt me for a new password. So I'll just put in a new password for myself. And set the new password. And as you can see right now, it says I don't have any applications because I don't have access to anything in this account. But let's go back to our group and go ahead and go over to permission sets and then click on create permission set. And we're going to select a predefined permission set because we just want to give administrator access or so have access to everything. I'm going to click next, click next and click create. And now we have this permission set called administrator access. Next, we want to go to AWS accounts and then click assign users or groups. Uh, we need to select an account first, assign users or groups, select the admin group, click next, and then select the permission set administrator access, and then click next and click submit. And now what it's doing, it's configuring the access for this account. And uh, now the account has uh, administrator access. If we go back to the page where we just logged in before, refresh this page, you can see that we have access to this AWS account. And if I click on this, I can go into the management console or command line programmatic. So what we're going to do is go to our command line and then do AWS configure SSO. This is the name is just going to be called SSO. The start URL is going to be uh, this URL here. I'm going to copy this. You can also find this in the dashboard right here. Click on this. The region is going to be EU West 1. That's, that's my region. And this I can leave it as default. It will show a pop up trying to log into the account. And I'm just going to click allow here. And it's granting access done now i can close that now it's saying cli default client eus1 i'm going to agree with that output format so you can set that to json uh, profile name pause right there this isn't going to be my official default account if you want this to be your default account that you're always using all the time then set the profile name to default but i'm going to be leaving it like this because i already have a default account that i'm using that isn't this account okay back to the video it's giving me a profile name administrator access and i'm just going to save that and now it's telling me to use the profile specify the profile name using dash dash profile as shown i'm just going to run this now and you can see that it's using this account to list the s3 buckets on my account so if i go to, over to s3 in aws i should see that bucket listed out there you can see that.
So that's all the prerequisites that you need in order to get started with this course. If you found this video without coming from one of the course videos, then I'll leave some links down in the description below. So go and check out the course that I'm doing where I'm teaching some very valuable skills that will help you both in your professional career as a developer, as well as giving you just that little bit of an edge if you're already a seasoned developer. So make sure to check it out. If you're new to the channel, subscribe if you like this content. This five part course will teach you how to create a full stack application in React using TypeScript, Material UI, and a Perl GraphQL on the front end, whilst using AWS on the back end with services such as AWS AppSync with DynamoDB and AWS Cognito for authentication. I'll be showing you the most easiest and scalable way to build your integrations. As well as this, we'll be integrating the Google Books API on our front end application so that we can see how to integrate REST APIs with the Perl GraphQL library. This course will teach you many valuable skills that will give you great confidence on your full stack journey so make sure to subscribe to catch all of the episodes as soon as i release them